folks, we are absolutely back in full effect. Uh, this is Adventures of the Black Nerds. Uh, I don't know what episode. Episode 71? 71. Word. Brother. Hey, hey, you know what? That's a good number and a bad number because I feel like we could have been like in the hundreds. We for uh, sure could have been broke that like way months ago. But, yeah. you know, things happen. Things happen. Things happen. You know, like life is something else. Um, but I, I'm just truly happy to be here, man. I'm always grateful. Always love these moments. I know this is super random on a Monday night, and it's super late. Super late. Uh, it's super late. Like I really should have been in bed an hour ago. But you know, life has a way. Um, real talk though, Adventures of Black Nerds. I'm Baron J six seven. I'm T Jones, and um, yeah, we got a, we got a lot to talk about. This is a lot going on. Um, yeah, for sure. PlayStation Five did their reveal. We haven't had we've had this discussion outside of the podcast, but uh, we we wanted to um, talk about it on here, discuss it on here because it was a lot of mixed reviews, and it's actually not just from you. I had I actually had a couple conversations outside of just me and you talk, and a lot of people really felt uh, a lot more people felt the way you felt um, specifically What's about it. Money? Um, you, you know what? Welcome everybody. This is an open discussion, and you can throw your questions in there. We see the chat. We're here, um, and we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I didn't mean to cut off. No, no, no. We're talking about PS Five uh, okay, and the, the reveal. Uh, my main issue, and honestly, my only issue with the reveal was the way they opened it up. Mm-hmm. Um, I've made a video. Uh, it's it's on YouTube. We can put the link below. Um, it, it just uh, I uh, they opened up the very first trailer reaction video or the f- trailer reaction video. Wow, the very first trailer that opened up uh, the PlayStation Five review or the PlayStation Five reveal was uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. Now the reason I have a problem with that is because Grand Theft Auto Five, for those who don't remember. It came out a couple months before the release of the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. Mm-hmm. So for PlayStation 5 to take the time and open up a completely new um, console generation with a game from two generations ago, that bothered me for yeah. that reason and that reason alone. Mm-hmm. Not because I hate Grand Theft Auto, not because Grand Theft Auto is not relevant, because it is very relevant. Grand Theft Auto 5 is has been and we've talked about it plenty of times on this podcast you could probably go through any episode and find us talking about how grand theft auto and elder scroll skyrim are consistently top selling titles across every platform yeah from pc to it um i mean hell even on the switch uh skyrim is a top selling game so for them to open up with grand theft auto 5 my only beef with it was super simple super clean you do not open up your new generation with a with two generation old game. Yeah, that's it. It. I know I made it seem like it was more than that, but really that was it. Now the success of GTA Five. On a side note, though, what we did, and I put it on Twitter not too long ago, and we can debate this right now. All the success of GTA Online sh- that showed Rockstar that they had no reason to make GTA Five. Other than GTA Online, mm-hmm. and, and because, oh, okay, finish your thought, yeah. Because think about it this way: What do you see memes of when it comes to Grand Theft Auto, and just and just in general, just pop culture? You see San Andreas, yeah. All the memes for Grand Theft Auto across the board are San Andreas memes. It's all you had to do was follow the train, CJ. Yeah. Uh, oh shit! And, here we go oh, again. Shit, here we go again. Mm-hmm. For all of the Grand Theft Auto games, those are the only two memes that still recur that pop up in pop culture. Yeah. That we actively use in any given scenario and they pop up and they're ready to go. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not gonna gauge the success of a game based on how many memes are made after it, but it is a good measuring stick if we're honest. Yeah. Um we all know Dark Souls has plenty of memes, you know, praise the sun, get good, blah, 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 blah. But 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 my main thing with GTA five is much fun and as much advancement as it was, 
most people are only playing GTA online. Yeah. I think they, they, well, okay, so I looked at it different. I was okay with it. I didn't have an issue with it because it, it made sense to me. It was the top selling game. And if they're, if they're going to, and it was the game that consistently came out with more content than any other game out there within seven years. PlayStation 4 came out 2013. So when you look at all of the content that they put into that game, and I'm talking about GTA Online, I guess the issue is should they have made GTA Online a separate game from GTA 5? You know, so now it's like, okay, well, yeah, we can make GTA 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever. But GTA Online, it seemed like what they wanted to do was create a over. A, or a, a ever evolving world where we hey, we can put this content in here. People can create their own game, their own map, their own whatever inside the game without having to, um, without having to do anything major. So it's like, hey, yeah, we can give you a world where we give you the guys the platform. Y'all create it. People create it. I I, I heard that they. Cre- this is when I knew. I just talked to somebody recently about GTA 5 and they were telling me that you get taxed in that game. So when you're playing the game and you have millions of dollars, you have to pay a tax. So some people don't play it unless they're doing something to get money, which I didn't know at the time because I, I haven't played GTA. I've only I only watch it. I have a lot of fun yeah. watching the game. Uh, so the when content I, is amazing. Exactly. People create stories out of it. It is a game that I don't I I like I'll I'll turn on Twitch or wherever platform, watch people playing it and just enjoy sitting there playing it. There's a lot of games like that, but Grand Theft Auto, to my mind, is obviously we're talking about it now. People have created stories, they created little mini movies out of it. We all seen it. So um I understood it. From that aspect, because it was a game that was consistently in the top. Just if you're just gauging it off of like Twitch, let's just use Twitch as an example. Um, it's consistently in the top ten, like consistently. You know, whether yeah, it's a new it really rod, is. a new month in, month out. You see what I'm saying? So I understood. I I understood it. Now, the, my second point to it was with. Them saying, hey, we're not going to create a GTA 6. We're going to pretty much give you... Because all it is is an add-on. I even wrote it down. It's an expansion. It's not a new game. It's not a DLC. It, or, Well, I mean, it's an expansion. It's a, it's a DLC. So, um, but then to hear, hey, GTA Online is going to be free online. Okay, cool, whatever. But I, my question was, did people really want a GTA 6? Did people really want... To start over. Because I started thinking. Imagine putting. So the person I talked to. He said. I didn't just put hours into it. Like remember we gauge games on hours. I put years into this game. So imagine if they came out with a GTA 6. And a GTA Online 2. Something for a new game for people to buy. All of the content that you bought. All of the materials that you accumulated, the money you accumulated, the cars, the property you owned in that game, you you have to start over. Now, I didn't know if I knew how I felt about that. I didn't know how other people would feel about that. So it was like, hey, did people want to start over or did people want a new game? After talking to you a lot more, I understood there's some people that don't play online games like that. I get it, especially like yeah. a GTA Online. But when... If you play that game and you put years into it, I'm t- like I said, 2013 up until now, how would you feel? I know how I felt about, once again, it's the only example we pretty much use on here, Destiny. I knew how I felt when I had to start over. So imagine putting years into a game and then having to start over. So that was one of the questions I had. This is why I had to go to somebody that actually played it and ask them these questions. So... Uh, this I, is this is go ahead. No, I was just gonna say that's I never I didn't see an issue with it when I first when we first and, got in. And my my final thoughts on it. Hey, well, folks, first off, folks, welcome Adventures of Black Nerds. 
Um, we are currently recording our podcast. Much love. Thank you guys for partaking. Mm-hmm. The floor is open. You guys can ask questions. You can interact with us. We are here. We are live, as you can see. Um, much love. Thank you for spending the time with us. You can be anywhere else. I appreciate you guys being here with us. Um, but to the to the point, long story short, we got six Grand Theft Autos in a matter of six years, seven years. And we've only had one Grand Theft Auto in a matter of eight. Mm-hmm. Now, for them to write off online DLC and expansions as the reason why they didn't give us another game, that bothers me. Because when I think of Grand Theft Auto, now, okay, let me let me back up. No, I'm gonna finish first. When I think of Grand Theft, when I think of Rockstar, I think of amazing stories and epic moments that live on for decades. Mm-hmm. Whether it's Grand Theft Auto, whether it's Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, uh, whether it's San Andreas, I, all these moments that live on for a very, very long time and are part of our pop culture. Grand Theft Auto 5, even though it was revolutionary in its games, its world, and its mechanics, I feel like the online aspect hit the bigger, hit had the better bat. It hit better. It stuck better. Because of course, there was the cre- because like with Fortnite, there was the creative aspect. Mm-hmm. Like, and it was able to create, like you said, everything you just said. I don't want to go down that train again. Yeah, but, but, for me, for the guy who I don't need an online experience in order to truly enjoy a game. Um, I don't, I mean, right now I have No Man's Sky on, which is something I'm going to talk about a little later. Yeah. Um, I just, as much love as I have for this game, it's, I think it's me putting my old man suspenders on. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm just feeling some type of way because the game series that I, from a company that I've always trusted has turned into this online money grubbing world. Yeah. Um. And it, it's not. Man, that's too... that's crazy to hear you say it that way. Yeah, I'm a, I, that's because the reason why I say that, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but you in today's climate, where if it's not, if there's no, we and we've had this conversation. So once again, sure. if it's not online, the game dies. There's a death period for your game. Your your sure. game ends at some point. The majority of the world plays it when it first the first week it comes out. Like if you think about think about, well, you know what? Let me not even use that as an example because I haven't played it yet. But think about God of War. God of War is the perfect example. True. No one plays one God of War awards. right now. Yeah, I don't you see what I'm saying? No one. Right you you played it. You beat it. You put it on the shelf. If you platinum did, you went above and beyond. Hey, if you go back to do like hard mode, they change the difficulty settings. Yeah, then you you know you've exceeded the above and beyond with that. Once you do it though, that's it. So online gaming is where it's at. If your game doesn't have an online, and then if you don't expect to keep creating for your game. Any, I, I feel like a developer like Rockstar King can come out with a game every year if they wanted to. Easy. Right? Easy. They Easy. can create... Sto- they Even have they enough... they remade all their Grand Theft Auto. Mm-hmm. They, they have kill. enough characters. They've created so many different characters in all of their games from Grand Theft Auto 3 all the way up to World 5 now that they can create multiple titles every year. But what's easier? What's... F- f- because to be honest, the easier thing to do is to create an online thing and just build, build it. on top of it. Keep on building. Yeah. It. So I, I. So and then so, to see what we're at now, see all the games we have now, see what games we're consistently talking about. What do they all have in common? Some type of online aspect to it, right? I, and I and I'm gonna tell you, uh, you know, bitterly. If I can say that, if that's the proper word for it, Mm -hmm. just being honest, I hate the success of GTA five, man. Yeah. Um, I hate the success of it 
because one of the greatest storytelling game companies, and of course, this is from the outside looking in because I haven't got f- anywhere past the opening car race yeah. in GTA Online. Yeah. Um. So, of course, my opinion is almost null and void. I'm speaking from the outside looking in. Um, you, then you I, should go back and play because there is a story. No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Um, I'm good. Um, right. you're, you're talking to somebody who who stands on his heels and when he and he means it. Like you're talking to a guy who hasn't bought 2K since 2K15, and we're, we're who hasn't bought FIFA since 2K16. And we're also talking we're also talking to a guy that can walk away from any game at oh, any given point. I can walk point. away in a heartbeat. You know, so that so that is the, that's the I think that's the the climate too that we're in as well. Like some of these developers are trying to create games where people stay. You know, where people don't walk away, where people don't play nothing else. I'm that guy. I was never that guy until I started playing, which you put me on Fallout 3. Mm -hmm. That's when I started devouring games. And I'm talking eating every inch, beating, touching, exploring every inch of the game before I went on to another game. You see what I'm saying? I, it was one hard second, for one me. One second. Go ahead. Folks, let us know which console you guys are going to buy. Because that's, that's honest to God, that's what we're talking about right now. Mm-hmm. What consoles are you guys going to buy first? Is it PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X? Let us know. Um, but keep going, bro. I didn't mean to interrupt. My no, you're good. I, w- I was just, you know, getting ready to wrap up that, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a gamer now that I commit to a game. Excuse me. I commit to a game and I play that game, and it's it's once again it's an example that I'm always using because I continue to play it to this day. Destiny, it's a game that I've put in, I've put years into. I'm not gonna say hours anymore. I'm gonna say years. Sure. I've put years into this game. I've done every and anything. I you know th- this was the game that I was able gonna do every and anything in. So. Is it easy for me to just say, nope, I'm done, and just walk away? It's for not. Me it is. It, you know, for me, I can't do that. I can't do And Rockstar have created a game like that. I just, it, I can't do it, man. I can't, I can't play multiple games at one time and not beat them. Because my goal is to beat the game, and that's it. There's what, you seen me beat. Metal Gear Solid, it's a game I, I use as an example as well all the time. I beat that game multiple times to get the different camos. Once I did it, that was it. They had an online aspect. They stopped supporting the online aspect. So what happened to the game? It went on the shelf. And, and, yeah. And that's where it's at. And, and you know what? It's, um... Mm, <laughs> I... <laughs> he I, said, "I got much you, suspenders you, on." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just call me an old man, dude. Mm-hmm. Because this is this is how I really feel about it. Yeah. Console has always, and I feel like I'm having this conversation for the tenth time on this podcast, and I apologize. No, it's to all those good. who have heard it. So I'm gonna sum it up quick. Console has always been about plug and play. Mm-hmm. That was its sole purpose. Now I know things evolve. I know businesses expand. I know we're branching into newer territories. I mean, everything from content creating, like I wonder how the new consoles are going to integrate that. Like, cause that should actually be a very big part of the new consoles. Like I know PlayStation used to, and then for a bit and then stop. And then it came back that whole instant upload to Twitter or Facebook or YouTube. Yeah. I it was all of the was. above. It was yeah, Facebook, yeah, yeah. Twitter and YouTube, but then and they it went down for a bit and then it came back and then, yeah. and then they stopped. Business. They took Facebook off completely. See, okay. Yeah. Um, and the, this is so to see PlayStation make those moves. I hope they double down and expand on it. And make it to where I can damn near run my entire broadcast directly from my console and clip and edit and post along the way. Because all that'll do is keep me more time with the controller in my hand. Well, you can which, you can do that now too. Don't forget. True. That, that is no, that I is know, it is still I'm doable talking, now. But let's be honest, at least from my perspective, I hate the user interface on PlayStation. The game as a console, it's amazing. The UI, I freaking hate it. Mm-hmm. I think it's clunky. I go to check my friends list and I damn near like pass out from how long it takes to load up. Yeah. Like it's having a panic attack and it doesn't know what to do. 
Um, and that's just, you know, I'm not, I have all the systems. I have a laptop, I got Xbox, I have the PS4. So when I'm speaking on it, I'm speaking from a place of, look, I'm honest across the board comparison. So when I tell you that it takes me forever to add somebody outside of a game into a party chat on PlayStation, I promise you, in comparison to Xbox, it takes freaking forever to a point where I'm like, just add me. If yeah. you're already there, just add me. I'll join your party. I don't care. Like anything to make this system go faster. And then Lord forbid you have to go to your menu, blah, 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 blah. But all of these things are supposed to be fixed with the new consoles. With PS5, they're talking about no loading times for a lot of things. Um, they're talking about... Because that's all I expect. All I, I'm not a graphics junkie. Yeah. Oh, no, Brian. Oh, no, no, no. I promise you it's not just you. If you have... Ex- for somebody who's just in PlayStation, they probably don't know this. But if you have both consoles, if you got PlayStation and Xbox, I promise you, side by side, go ahead and add, create a party. I promise you, you could create and kill two parties before you finish doing one on PlayStation. That is a hand of God, not trying to talk crap. It is what it is. Now, on the other hand, though, PlayStation games run smoother and look better from my experience. And I'm talking about games that I play. Like, currently, I'm playing No Man's Sky. I bought my PlayStation solely to play No Man's Sky. The game wasn't originally what they promised in 2016, but Sean Murray didn't give up. Him and his team at Hello Games decided to keep going and pushing through it, which normally I'm kind of against because I'm like, then don't, you know, don't do not do that. But they came out years later. The game is everything they promised it would be. Now, of course, it's four years later. But I held on to the game. I don't trade in my games anymore for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, I I took that stance a long time ago. But then I have my Xbox, and now you got uh, got, uh, Xbox Game Pass. And Xbox Game Pass is now, all right, what up, everybody? Oh, snaps, we got the Tone Dev family in here. Much love, guys. Hold up. Um, So so now No Man's Sky is on Xbox uh, Game Pass. I have Game Pass. I love No Man's Sky. And then there, I have more friends on my Xbox uh, friends list. So I decided to start running No Man's Sky and run with some people on there and mm-hmm. just be able to be in party chat and while I'm running the game and communicate with people. Yeah, see, I have both. Um, and I, um, I'm going to tell you, No Man's Sky looks like crap on my Xbox. Yeah, I'm going to do a video about it. I'm going to do a side-by-side comparison. I'm going to try to go to similar planets. I'm going to just walk around. You don't know how many times I've walked into dangerous objects that are trying to kill me because they didn't render in time. Put it this way. I feel like I'm playing PUBG before it fully released on yeah, No bad. Man's Sky on Xbox. Yeah, see, I don't... And y'all know what I'm talking about. And 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 also let oh, them know you got the bad, new Juan. Xbox, too. <laughs> my bad, Juan. I won't be on 2K, man. Yeah, I, can't. I don't. I don't get on 2K. Let me I tell you. Play 2K. Side sidebar, I love 2K. I love FIFA, but I will never play the online aspect of it. I literally played FIFA in 2K simply to build my character and play the career mode. That career is the mode. That's only it. reason. That is it. You not. I used to love online. playing online with 2K and Madden and all them games. I just can't. I can't keep doing it. I can't keep starting over. And one, this goes back into what we've been talking about. I love, I guess you could say I love the new wave of gaming. I can't keep starting over every year, man. I can't, I can't keep putting money into this game, putting hundreds of dollars into a game, and then have to do it all over again. And I, I just can't. So that that's that, like I said, wrapping it all back up in, um, in the full circle, it's just, it is what it is. I, I can't do it. Yeah, and and for me, um, this is like okay, straight up. The way okay, folks who just got here, Tone Juan. The reason we're talking about this right now is long story short, I didn't like the way that the PlayStation Five reveal opened up. Mm-hmm. I was pissed. I and was then, and, pissed. And it that did. They opened it opened up, with up GTA Five. Yeah, GTA Five. There you go. And them opening up with that opened the whole door of like, I personally feel the success of GTA Online has completely steered Rockstar away from what made them great in the past. Mm -hmm. Now, that's just me and my old man slippers being mad and talking about back in my day. That's just me. 
Nah, but what's I, gonna piss you off is when Call of Duty say, "Yeah, we're not making one every year no more," and we no, we had that no, conversation. Let, let me, That's let gonna me piss you. you off. Watch. No, let me tell you. Uh, see, thank you, Juan. It's ass. Oh, exactly, Tone. I just I don't know if you heard. I literally have NBA 2K15 and FIFA. I got 2K15 and FIFA 15. That's the last games I've bought. Why? Because I took a stance and I'm a grown man. I work too hard to be sitting out here buying roster updates with a, with more better sweat mechanics. That's I refuse. I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. It's and stupid, then you make bro. and then with 2K, <laughs> they make the shooting mechanics so damn hard that here it is. My character has a 70 rating on layups, but they'll miss a wide open layup. So now you're you sure that they you to spend money. Well, I don't give a damn. It's a wide open layup. I don't give a damn if it's me. It should I it should be old school dunk button at that point. Now hey, I know y'all. He said Luke Wal- he said Luke Walk making that layup any day. My character better <laughs> Bro, if Luke Walk can NBA do it, you can do it. Bro, bro. And then I I mean, of course, I've never been the technical uh better sweat mechanics. Yet you're going to get games every year on uh, any more updating online, a new direction. Look at the roadmap for Destiny 2. Okay, now let me tell you this. I've been a fir- I've been avidly against console games looking more and more like PC games. Mm-hmm. Y'all know that. That's nothing new. Most people here watching this video right now have heard me say that in some way, shape, or form. I am avidly against that. But people are loving it. Console gaming is blending more and more and looking more and more like PC gaming, and I gotta get over that. And I, I'm getting there, but I refuse to buy into it. I refuse. No, I'm okay with it. I'm not buying into it. Destiny, I'm. I have fun every now and then, but I'm to a point now with Destiny where I'm so far gone and removed. I tried to get back on, and it was hard for me to enjoy it. I couldn't do it. I felt so overwhelmed. I felt like, and then and then I have this weird thing with MMOs. No matter how fun the MMO is, if I'm not running with my crew, I don't care. I'm not gonna play it. Yeah, and I, like, I jumped on Fallout seventy six with uh, with Johnny Man. Yeah, and I've had I we were having so much damn fun. We ran it for hours. Yeah, I ain't been on since because we haven't been on the same page to play. Yeah, see, that's that's how I look at it as well. I mean, I have a lot more fun playing with people too. But the thing is, uh, you know, with a game, the the reason why Destiny is gonna I, it's gonna always get my money is because I enjoy the game. I make the game fun playing by myself as well. I try to get people on. I just found uh, like I just found out a cousin plays it and he plays it just as much as me. So it's like, hey, well, I'm super excited. I started to, I enjoyed the game so much that now I play on all three consoles. I play on Xbox, yeah. I play on PlayStation, and I play on PC. Uh, but I don't, I only bought the free version on PC. On console, I got the discounted version. Or on PlayStation, I got everything. I got the full collector's edition, all that shit. On Xbox, I got like the, the discounted version. I got some content, no other content. And it's because. I love the game. I talk shit on the game. I tell it like it is when they oh, mess yeah, up. It out. But I, I guess I'm. I like the aspect of PC gaming coming to console gaming because I'm investing my time into it, and I. That's how I look at it. If I'm gonna put thirty hours into this game, and I'm going to continue to play this game. I don't want to. I want to get every dollar out this month, out this game. So that's why I say, hey, I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna continue playing it. I love it. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't play it. If I didn't now, enjoy it the way I enjoy it, I wouldn't play it. I talk about it enough. I watch videos on it. I watch people sure. play it. So that should tell you, hey, I like it. But that should also tell you. And then I always talk about it too. The community. They have a community. That of people that help people play the game, help a community of people that can run stuff with you. I'm not into story games as much as I was. True. And, and, that's, and I and tell you, I I platinum Fallout 3. That should tell you everything true. you need to know. True. 
I platinum the game. I beat every DLC in the game. I created as every and anything I could create in that game. That should tell you everything you need to know. And that was the first RPG game that I played. And it was because of I'm trying to that dude right there, right there, why I started playing um RPG games. I just got into Destiny. It was a game he told me B told me about, and I started playing I it. Was My whole doing, family oh yeah, played it I at forgot. one point. Hey, so, hey, no, no, hey, you're I, muted. I, totally I can't forgot. hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? You can't hear right. me? But I don't know. I can hear me. Damn, I can't hear you. Because I can look. I think they can't hear me. Can y'all hear me? What happened? Can y'all hear me? me? I don't oh, know. What'd you do? You broke it? Happened. Hold on. Okay, well, I'm going to keep talking. Because I feel like they can hear me. So, folks, straight out. Um, Destiny for me, I, I don't know why we keep talking about Destiny. Destiny for me, I was a day one guy. I was a closed beta. I was an open beta. I was, I had my brother. Okay, you can hear me. My brother had the post. Uh, we're back. We're back. Uh, they could hear me. They just, yeah. Yeah, they couldn't. I couldn't hear you. Okay. I, I forgot that I put Destiny on in my neighborhood. Because I was the guy with the original Destiny poster. I remember following the stories. I remember doing, thank you guys. I remember all this chaos and all this craziness. And then I remember playing the closed beta and the open beta. And I remember I was like, this game's hollow. This game's empty. It's nothing what they promised. We all now, said that. We Yeah. And let, let's move on. Let's move on. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. But the point, the, my next question, and this is this is it. Which console are you going to buy first and why? Uh, Well, oh, you're not asking me that. You're asking everybody else. You know I'm going to get no, the PlayStation. Well, yeah, I'm asking, I'm asking everybody and I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. You. All right, so I'm going to get the PlayStation 5 because majority of my friends is there. Um, I wish my bro Baron would get it and scrap Xbox, but that's not going to happen. I know I'm going to get the PlayStation 5, and, I, and I'm and i not worried about it too much because I know I'm going to get the Xbox Series X Scarlet version 7. I'm going to get that one as well. But first, it, and, and then that's a hard question to ask too because since I know I'm going to get both, we're kind of all waiting on the dates. They're saying that it's a ticking sound. Oh, Let us know if you're hearing the ticking oh. technical difficulties. You still hear it? Came back. They blamed you. Oh, yeah, uh, but yeah. No. I'll take the blame, dog. You know what I'm saying? I think it should be gone now. Oh, wait. No. Okay. I, I hear it, too. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. Boom. I'm a nerd. Hey, look. First and foremost, static, I guess. Thank you, G-Money. We're figuring it out. But while he's working on that, and y'all can hear my staticky voice, I mean, when it comes to the next generation of consoles, especially since the uh, the new PlayStation 5 controller looks like a high-tech Xbox, uh, Xbox controller, it's simply a thing of which console is going to have a game that I want to play. Now, speaking on that, did y'all see that a lot of games are getting pushed back? I personally brought out the idea that all new cons, all new games that are coming out, anything past like June, like now to the new console, I thought they should have just been pushed back and released on the new consoles. That's me personally, um, but I know that's not necessarily going to work uh, uh, because be what good. usually happens. Okay, uh, I'm going to buy the Xbox because one, where all my friends are, two, blind loyalty to Microsoft. <laughs> hey. I'm not for me. It's not a it's not a brand thing. Mm-hmm. I'm not a brand oriented guy. Like I'm, except when it comes to my food, because I tell you, Oreos taste way better than freaking store brand uh, cookie and cream cookies. Like I, I just, when it comes to food, I'm sorry, I'm brand oriented. Like just give me the Oreos. That's what I want. But when it comes to consoles, for me, it's a matter of what I want to play. Like I told y'all earlier, I bought my PlayStation 4 simply to play No Man's Sky and Horizon Zero Dawn. That was why I played it. Like, that's that's why I picked it up. I literally sat and begged my wife to get it for me. Like, that was was my whole get down. That was my whole reason. 
Now moving over to um to the new generation. Oh, I the console that I'm gonna pick up, it's gonna be based on price and it's gonna be based on what games come out with it. Because a part of me was like, oh, I'm gonna be day one. I'm gonna get the PlayStation because they got a couple exclusives coming out. That's what I was gonna do. Yeah, see, yeah, we got Miles Morales coming out. He about to have his own Spider-Man feature, and I'm excited. I hope it's a, I hope it's they don't cheapen the length of the game just because it's it's gonna be like Uncharted Legacy. It's gonna be a full game, but yeah, and that's fair and that's fine. Um, I don't. I need substance. I'm not about to just buy these consoles. Like I bought my Xbox One day one. And there was no game for it. But what was it? For Forza, uh, Rise, Son of Rome. Uh, there was a couple other games. And then I don't like Halo like I used to. I don't enjoy it like I used to. So that that goes out the window. Um, I need some... Okay. Xbox, ugh, Xbox needs some damn exclusives. Let's be real. If Xbox don't come out the gate with at least four or five solid exclusives, which I know is asking for a lot... Because technically, Xbox only had four or five solid exclusives over the course of a life cycle of the Xbox One. So for them to for to ask them to come out with all of that on the Series X is freaking ridiculous. But um, yeah, Rome sucked. Okay, let's be real. I hate tech uh, tech demo games. Oh, the X yeah, they were trash. It was completely whack. There was nothing there. Um, Crackdown took three, four years to come out. People forget Crackdown 3 was, if I'm not mistaken, Crackdown 3 was supposed to be either a year one or a day one or a year one release on the Xbox uh, on the Xbox One. Uh, my son headstrong on Xbox One, but now he's talking about the PS5, so we'll be getting the PS5. Yeah, de- there you go. Dead Rising. I enjoyed Dead Rising, but I didn't enjoy it until it came on. I think it was like Game Pass, or they gave it away for free. And then I played it. And maybe because I was bored and there was nothing else out at the time. Because you, y'all you remember during that time before uh, The Witcher 3 came out, it gaming was kind of dead. Do y'all remember that? There was a solid stretch where gaming was dead. And everybody was waiting on that, on, on waiting on The Witcher 3. Nothing really came out, at least for me. Uh, I remember sitting there bored out of my mind. And I personally feel if it was not for Game Pass, I think Xbox would have damn near died. That's my opinion. Y'all tell me if I'm wrong. But I just, Game Pass came through and made Xbox a competing system. Yeah, the racing games. My bad. Uh, Do you guys still hear the static? Here he go. He want to come back. Shut up. <laughs> All I, listen, I think the static should be gone. I'm hoping so. He said yeah. static, 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 shock. static should be gone. Hopefully. I would actually, I would actually enjoy a static shock video game on the sidebar, but no. Um, perfect. Okay, Thank you. good, 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 good. All right, but but yeah, with all the exclusives, man. First off. We already know Sony has an amazing track record for making exclusives. You got The Last of Us 2, which is getting review bombed. I don't know. I I get why. I don't want to talk too much about it because the game is still so fresh. And I've only gotten like four hours into it. And in the yeah. four hours that I've played it, I've enjoyed it. Yes, something that's that a, happened to some That's characters. a video in itself. So Yeah, that's a whole, yeah, that's a yeah. whole thing in itself. Um, but I will say this. I agree that certain, some characters were written poorly so far. And um, the game, pl- I love the gameplay. I love the hand to hand combat. It's not super astronomical, but it is very fun. And I feel like I'm getting really into it. And Halo, oh God, don't even get me started on Halo. I, Halo, I don't think it's a bad game, but I'm over it. You, I've been over that's Halo cr- since. That's cr- you know I, what I've been over Halo since Reach. You know what? You know what makes that sound so crazy? I I don't play Halo. Um, I did back in the day. I don't play it because I enjoy once again the climate we in. I enjoy watching it, and I 
I'm always saying they should make a new Halo. Make a Halo that they can run for years because the esports scene needs it. It was one of the sure. first MLG games. They need like how and they and the fan base for Halo is out outrageous. Yeah. They can compete yeah. with the Call of Duty if they would, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Excuse me. If well, you know, Bungie, if Bungie would actually stick to it and create and eat and you know make it in, into an esport game, make it into a title where they can hold these tournaments and stuff. I like that. I I pay attention to that. I pay attention to that aspect of of gaming, esports, and all of that. But Halo, they that should always Halo should be Microsoft's Call of Duty. It has to be. Like I just don't understand. Like that game is right there. Thanks. I know they're working. Um, Thanks. Man, see that's crazy. And they made Reach it was the pinnacle for me. And they made bad Call of Duty games. Oh, and they 100%. continue making more even more bad Call of well, Duty see, games. Like and and folks, just to give you some like to dive deep into the way it, gaming is for me, I skipped everything from uh Battlefield 1, I mean Black Ops 1. All the way to no, you played Black Ops World 1. War II. You played Black Ops. That's 1. it. Yeah, that's it. I played Black Ops One. Didn't you play two? You played Black Ops no. Two. No, that's I cra- did not play two. You skipped I the best Call three. of Duty. I skipped all of that up to World War Two. Yeah, that's, then I played that's World crazy. War Two, and then I ran Modern Warfare. That's crazy. I skipped. That- I skipped. Uh, from Advanced Warfare. So I skipped Advanced Warfare, Infinity Warfare, Black Ops 3. I didn't play. I, yeah, that was it. What Ended. are the numbers, Mason? Hey, that is the funniest thing. I, no lie. If y'all ever catch me randomly chuckling, it's because I said, what are the numbers, Mason, in my head? Like, I, I'm not even going. I'm not even going to lie. What are the numbers, yeah. Mason? Yeah, see, I, I'm for me. Uh, Halo is the old rapper that won't retire. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Halo has let to me, be. Let me tell you what would get me to play the new Halo, and I think this is what's gonna happen, and it's gonna piss a bunch of people off, but it is gonna make me happy. I think they're about to revamp Halo like they did Assassin's Creed. I it, believe no. it with all my heart, and it's gonna piss people off. And I'm going to be okay with it because now it's going to be something I want to play. Listen, I'm gonna tell you, think, if they tell do you, that, it, the you. game wouldn't survive. Look, that's what they said about Assassin's Creed. Assassin, but Assassin's Creed, Creed is still a story game. There's no esports hey, side hey, to Assassin's hey, Creed. Hey, do you know the esports hey, side of, of, of Halo? Hey, there's an esports to uh, there's an esports to 2K and pe- it's an RPG. Yeah, and aspect. it's but it's still the same thing across the board. Is there an esports okay. side to Assassin's Creed? No. Okay, so the game would Let completely die. Why? Because the people, the people who are in that community, was shit on that game from and get, ten bucks to. You would play it, yeah. Me, and the game would probably me, be good. Let let's, me, let's, t- let me tell you. Let's, let's say that. Let's, let Let me make the argument to shut everything you said just down. You can't. Animal Animal Crossing, the fan, How the original does fan animal base. Animal Crossing listen, have listen, to do. You're not oh listening. You're not listening. You brought up the original fan base. Mm-hmm. That's what you brought up, but that's Animal your, Crossing doesn't your, have an esports t- side to it. What is the esports? Si- the only listen, reason why Halo listening. is as big as it is is because of the esports side of it. Am I wrong no. or am I right? I think you're wrong. I think Halo is the big, the big. Let me tell you why Halo is the biggest game. It is is as big as it is because one, it came out on the U.S.'s first big. Universal success console. And what did they use the game for? What was the game? So, the game. Remember the first yeah. MLG game Slayer. ever. The yeah, first gotcha. MLG game ever on the MLG market. One of the forefathers of esports, up there with True. StarCraft. So True. you can't. So that's why I'm saying what I'm saying is because the game they was made. It console wasn't e-sports. supposed to be doing. It wasn't supposed to. Be, it wasn't supposed to be this way. They didn't make the game for that reason. MLG seen that there was a competitive scene to it. Game battles came out. Look how many things have they started the Call of Duty wave. But That's the only reason this, why though. I'm talking about but it. Let me tell you that this. is a let me, super let me big part about it. Though. 
let me be real with you and we can solve this real quick everybody in the chat please let me know type in a one if you have seen any mlg major league gaming call um halo match that that's not even the question you should ask no how many people just, in the chat said, watch mlg stop, right stop. now no follow esports right now if because yeah, if just, you followed esports you would know exactly what i'm talking about but no but i'm trying to prove a point here anybody in here watched any mlg or can name any mlg halo competitors probably not okay it's six. but then my but but then but listen but listen but then my next point is how many people have competed in a halo tournament you're not asking what i'm trying to say is halo's though. success you're halo success asking. is not built on his competitive team. Halo success is completely built off of his competitive team. You jump, jump into a Reddit that, and ask that question. Jump into a Halo Reddit and ask that question. You, you see, this I, is the I mean, but majority, most people here have played Halo. Yeah, that's fine. Me. We're not. And what I'm trying to tell you is. We've all played it. You're asking. You're not asking the people. There's no real sports to watch. <laughs> that's crazy. You out of your COVID. mind. Listen, this is the thing. I um, <laughs> this is the thing with me. Like when I when I first started watching MLG stuff, it was only Call of Duty, and then you started watching. Remember Starcraft? Starcraft was super big, and then I think Starcraft you, was first before Star. All yeah, Starcraft was way big. Well, it, it was one. It was another it's PC. game. We're talking. I don't even like comparing the PC. No, what I'm talking more. about is the esports side of the games. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of people don't. Um, a lot of people don't sit back and watch esports. Like it's a, it is a, it's still a niche. I'm talking about how we watch. There's leagues. Some people don't know there's a Call of Duty World bro, League. Bro, some people don't know you. that there's a there's there's esports in um, uh, Clash of Clans. Some people Most don't people know that. Know that Jack and Rick Fox own esports. Teams. Yeah. So what, what so, is the, look, the the example that no, you hear but, is all oh, people I, making millions off of tournaments on Fortnite. Because no, everybody's not, kid, it's all over the TV. It's everywhere. They don't stream yeah. Call of Duty. They didn't stream Halo matches on TV. And when you. they did, it was on, what was the name of that that gaming channel? Uh, what was the name of it? Was it Tech TV? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, was it G4? Yeah, I think G4. It was G4. Yeah, G4. And it was one of the games being streamed on G4. You know how long ago that was? We were playing yeah. football when that was going on. Yeah, yeah. We were fat. freshmen and sophomores in high school High school when stuff like that was going on. Oh, so that's dope. I understand, like, when when like when the majority of people I talk to about esports, they don't understand it. They they don't watch it. True. Well, You bro, don't watch it. Yeah. You see I'm what I'm a, saying? I'm a quote-unquote nerd. So let me, what tell, I, let me so, tell you this. Go let ahead. me tell you this. The point I'm trying to make simply... Is I promise you, if Halo's success was strictly built on his competitive scene, it, it would have died a long time ago. It died a long time ago. It got resurgent yeah, and they remade it. Reach. Why? Why? Yeah. Because they because, because they played. there was no there was no developer yes, support. That's exactly what happened. They put it on PC. There was the no developer collection. support to the esports scene. They stopped. Yeah, Remember, they created. They, and they, they put it in the hands of the PC players. No, they it wasn't played, but it wasn't played competitively on PC. It was played on Xbox. No, cause, well, because it wasn't out, but then they put out the Master Chief Collection on PC, and it was a crazy mm -hmm. resurgence. Yeah, and that what and what happened? They came out with a two million dollar tournament. See, that's what Bro, that's what I'm. I got look. What, I got you. But what, what do I'm I got to say? Is, this what I'm saying for a fact. I know for a fact because I watched it. That's crazy. Season. That's crazy. You say that because if 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 competitive players didn't pick up the game, the game wouldn't have done it as good as it did. Bro, the Halo game, is a hey, household name. Yes, it is. I'm I'm telling you, it is. I under, understand books, that Netflix series. Movie. Yes, you're right. And, and that is not do because if that's the that case, had everything to do CSGO with CSGO movies. What? We should be watching CSGO Netflix series. We should be seeing CSGO because yeah, CSGO but, is strictly built on its competitive scene. Yes, it is. But CSGO is is a GOAT game. Global operation. Yeah, go, so. yeah, CSGO is a 
goat game. That's one of them if because that's one of them games. Like that's Team Fortress. Team Fortress is a good example, but that's one of them games where that's only what it was built for. They didn't like I said before. They didn't build Halo as an esports game. It didn't come out no, for an esports all. game. It was the esports scene that kept the game alive. It shouldn't have done oh, what it I did. I'm telling you, it should. I'm only it the was only the reason. Game for a new console that I'm still telling you. Away. I'm telling it you, was it, an American release by an American company. Yeah, I that. Yeah, there. and go. You see, oh, you, Red you, versus Blue. That's a whole other TV series. See, you when you when you go back, if you went back and actually watched like the history on it. Actually, I'm a link a um a video to that. There's a there's a video to. You, you stupid Crips versus Crips and Bloods. Nah, <laughs> there's a video. There is a there is a video on um, the score. Uh, they have a YouTube channel and they talked about it. They and they showed all they showed like the G four events and all of the things that that happened. Okay, no, even better yet. Remember how we talked about Dota and how Dota had a uh, uh, the the fan. Um, where the fans put up the money for the competition, it was the fans that put up the two million dollars for the for um, the Halo competition. That's two million dollars oh. to watch people play the game competitively. Bro, you think they I'm, couldn't afford I'm Bungie? Bungie the, couldn't the, afford the to do that. I'm not telling you that the Halo scene is not big. Bro. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. But what I'm telling you is Halo's success is not built around its competitive. Halo would have died instantly. The game came out if there was no competitive side to it. Why? Because there's no community support behind it. There's no developer support behind the game. You tell me when's the last time they put out an update? A major update? You, you can tell me when they put out a major update for Call of Duty. Let's take a step, let's take a step back. Let's take a step back. You're talking about old Halo's in today's I'm term. talking about all Halos up to this point okay. today. But all Halos up to this point are old Halos. Except yeah. Halo 5. Which, yeah, that's old. Because Halo 5 was what? A couple years ago. Years ago? Mm-hmm. Um, he said basically, but funnier. Yeah, he ain't lying. Um, I'm oh, Halo right is now. dead to me. Yeah, Halo's very dead to me. Mm-hmm. I, I'm telling you, the only way Halo's going to come back, and it's going to piss everybody off because it's going to be the greatest thing ever. Is Halo's gonna come back? Halo they already Five came out 2015 October. Oh yeah, come on. So you can't even. When did now? When did Destiny One come out? Uh, 2013. Okay, so now we can talk in terms of comparing Halo Five into the words and phrases that we deal with today. Mm -hmm. Community support. No, no. Blah, blah, even blah, blah, back, blah. even back then, even back then That's as well. Thing, yes. That's why I said for Halo 5, mm -hmm. we can. Okay. I said we can, so we can. So before Halo 5, we cannot talk about Halo the same way we talk about current Call of Duty and current uh, Destiny and blah, blah, blah. We why can't. not? Why not? Because, why not? Bro, most people didn't even have the Wi-Fi connector. to. The, do you know how long it took me to play an online game on console? And but I was eight gamer okay and people did it why because of the competitive scene everybody wanted to be competitive in that game Every, you you can't oh, yeah, tell me remember when we used to go to have our our team meals what was the game everybody was playing four people sitting in one room on two tvs playing halo that didn't just start because i well I, people enjoyed the game Let, don't don't get it twisted. The game was good back then. It was fun to play. It was the game that you could split screen and destroy people in. But yes. the game only survived because there was people to there, there were people to to mimic, like the ogre twins, like uh, well, like they like even Hook. There's a, it's, it's people I can name that you probably what? wouldn't even know who I'm talking about. Wow. Exactly. These are but these are competitive people that I still watch to this day. Let me <laughs> tell you, bro, let me tell you something. I, I can safely say I represent the general in this conversation, yeah. the general population. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you, as a representative of the general population, as the basic gamer, I played Halo because it was a flagship release. I enjoyed the story. Yes, it was fun to play online and hear your so-called Slayer. But it was that was all fun and games to me. But I promise you, 
I didn't give two craps about the esports scene. Of, of I, I did not. And that's what I'm telling. So how can you? So all right, here's my point to this then. So with you saying that and me telling you, because I'm not, I know for a fact. I love Metal Gear Solid. I'm I know for a fact. Uh, and this will be my last point on it. I know for a fact the esports scene was the only reason why the why Halo uh, survived. How can you tell me it didn't? How can you say that the esports scene had nothing to do with the growth of the game, with the the fact that they created, they remade the game that people love just for the esports scene, just for just so they can hold these tournaments, just so they can hold a championship tournament. And then what happened? They just stopped. They stopped developing the game. They stopped putting their time into the game. And I don't know if it's because Bungie had, you know, destiny things to worry about. Remember, they were in their con their contract with Activision. That's a whole story in itself. But imagine if they would have took the time and stuck to the esports scene, just like Call, Call of Duty put created a whole league and had teams play $10 million. Do you think they're getting $10 million even with the climate now, with the online climate, with COVID and everything? You think they're getting that money back? No, I don't think they come in close because the game isn't that... F people don't enjoy this game as much as they would have enjoyed like a Black Ops 2. So the esports scene has a... It, it, it can develop your game if that's what you're developing it for. If you're not developing it for that, then it's just a regular game. Then it is your story mode game, your online game. And most of those games do better than esports games anyway. Why? Because there's more people, like you say, the average gamer that'll buy the game that to play the game. And that's that. So I get what you're saying, but I don't think that that or no, I know for a fact that the esports scene had a huge part in the development of all the halos that you see now. Why? Because if they didn't create the, if there wasn't the esports scene, there wouldn't be no, there wouldn't have been a, a reach. There wouldn't have been a five. There wouldn't have been none of that. Do we think that the division lived up to its potential? No, it didn't. No, it did not. Um, the I, division, they didn't uh, care about that game enough. Let me tell you exactly when I fell off. When they adjusted the grind mid game, yeah, mid game. Because believe me when I tell you, everybody in my party and my friends list on Xbox played the division, including Travis. Mm -hmm. It was me, Travis, and all of us. Like mm -hmm. it, we had full crews running the division. Yeah, and we were farming. We were running routes. We had money routes. We had. It was a game. We were competing. Then they changed it to where the people who played for 10 hours a week could not any way shape or form keep up anymore there was no catch-up mechanic there there was no catch-up mechanic and this is where destiny wins because destiny wins because there is a catch-up mechanic and no matter how far behind you are you can still keep up in crucible for the most part mm -hmm. at least that's how I, that's only reason i even i've never uninstalled destiny is because i know any given time i can turn it on log in as long as it ain't iron banner i can get in there and keep up yeah they uh, with the division too they they also i don't think they they realized that their progression system and they did rectify that years after the fact right before the division uh two came out but <clears throat> with the division one they sure didn't i don't think they understood like people were going to destroy your game and i, I don't think a yeah. lot of people think about that like there are people who are put on this planet to just figure out the easiest, fastest way to destroy your game. So if you don't take them into consideration, they're going to find glitches. They're going to find exploits. They're going to find things in the game that you didn't expect to be there. And they didn't expect that. They didn't expect people to come over and be max power level waiting on them to release their raid. And that yeah. was the issue I had because... I would jump on. I had just started going back to like going had back to work gear. and I had gear that I couldn't keep up. So now my yeah. friends want to raid with me and I'm, I, Oh, I got to do these missions to get my gear up. It's, it's just, there was no way for me to catch up. Yeah. It, it, and then they took, they changed the currency. Mm -hmm. I remember for me, that's what pissed me off. They last minute changed the currency and I was absolutely furious and they, they made a whole currency pointless. Did you it ever did you ever go back after the the update? Nah, okay. nah because I, it, it got hectic. Yeah. Uh, 
and got, they had and came out with like a few DLCs, right? Hats. Yeah, and yeah. then there was a dude running around in the cowboy hats. Oh, that, that the, the hackers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro, it was nuts. Like it, it was unbearable. Um, what I loved about it, and it's ri- like when it first came out, is that whole that whole uh, anxiety of like, hey man, we got to get this material out of here. Yeah. All right, pop smoke. We're gonna call in the oh, cops. You talking about the dark zone? The dark zone. Yeah. I think the dark zone was some of the best. I uh, I spoke to a guy about that the other day, and he was telling me, "Yeah, I played the division, but I never went into the dark zone, and it was be- solely because you just ne- you couldn't control your environment." I love that yeah. Wild Wild West type, <laughs> you know, yeah, like hey, friend fun. or foe, friend or foe, but yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I do understand why people don't go in there because sometimes it's not as rewarding to a person that just jumped in. You know what I'm saying? Like when you yeah. just jump into the game, it, it could it could ruin the experience for you. It, it could it the dark zone was one of the moments where I would just sh- I could just shut off my PlayStation and walk away. Yeah, yeah I'm done. Yeah, d- bro, I Tone. love you know what I would do in the dark zone. I would pop smokes at different uh I would call in helicopters at different areas mm-hmm. just to keep everybody on their toes. I would, I wouldn't even have nothing to give out. Yeah. I would call a helicopter because it just made it easier when it was time to pick up. I can go. Everybody's down in one area just to keep throwing people off. I always did that. Um, and an, oh, another, what what war zone is. Oh, heck yeah. Big precursor. Oh, and I know we didn't get to it, but, um, sidebar, we're in the final minutes. Uh, mixer died. Oh, Mixer yeah. died today. Um, there was a bunch of different uh, sexual assault and abuse uh, allegations, all type of craziness going mm-hmm. on on Twitter and in the gaming world. Uh, I'm so sorry to all those affected by this on both sides. It, it's nuts, man. It is wild. Um, but now Mixer shut down, not because of all of that craziness, but they were in the plans to shut. They were planning to shut down. And they just took this moment to go with it. They went with the flow, completely shut down, and sold everything off to Facebook. So mm-hmm. now, all the popular streamers, um, all the streamers from uh, from Mixer, they're now bouncing between uh, Facebook Gaming and uh, YouTube and uh, and Twitch. Well, uh, we know for a fact that the two biggest, Shroud and, and Ninja, Ninja they're, they're going back to Twitch. And they money. they haven't. Um... They they didn't take the the contract that was get, being given to them by Facebook. We know that for a fact, and they're just in limbo. So we're waiting to hear what they got going on. Um, we speculated earlier, but I, once again, I think that they're they're both going to Twitch. Twitch owe Ninja apology though. They for sure owe him about an, him an, an apology. As for Shroud, I don't think they really left on bad terms. I think he just left. That was it. But uh, I I um. Who else? Gathalian. I think Gath- I think everybody's going to go back to Twitch. Twitch, it was home to some of these people. It was where they started. And you just tell me, oh, I just made, I made this bag. They made a, what'd you say? And the fan base is already there. Like, yeah. I wonder how many people are still subscribed to Ninja's Twitch. I bet you Ninja still gets mad bags from Twitch. They probably do, yeah. Just, just. Because I bet and it people- wasn't that long ago. No, it was less than it was a year, like literally a year. So you know. So yeah, I mean, look, I'm all for people getting their money. I'm not against it. Uh, I'm personally not on Twitch anymore, uh, just because I I found caffeine and I feel like it's a uh, there it's a place to grow. And I'll Twitch. I I still have my Twitch account. I'm still a Twitch affiliate there. My whole thing about Twitch is it'll be there. It's a staple. It would take the whole stock market and a meteor crashing into earth for Twitch to go away. Um, maybe it, it evolved to something else, but to go away completely, yeah. it's too established. It, it's, it's like the Amazon actually it's owned by Amazon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it ain't going nowhere. Yeah. It's not Twitch ain't yeah, going nowhere. Yeah. Twitch ain't going nowhere. So that's why I'm Juan going said, back. uh, never like mixer mixer. I, I know a couple of people that stream on mixer. Mixer is cool. It's just, um, it's it's a new un, uh, interface that you got to get used to. You you just have to get used to it. Uh, if you, what? Let me tell you why I knew Mixer wasn't gonna win. 
because of how heavily tied it was, how it was a Microsoft product. Yeah. Oddly enough, anything that's usually solely American when it comes to the tech space like this, usually don't do well. Mm -hmm. Xbox sells well in the U.S. and in the U.K. Yeah. That's about it. That's why PlayStation always murders across the board because PlayStation sells across the world. Like North America, a bit of South America, and then the UK, that is where Xbox does its best. Yeah. Historically, across the board, that's just what it is. Um, I mean, hell, we can count how many uh, different JRPG games came out on Xbox. I can count probably on one hand. Maybe both. Maybe I can count up to 10. Uh, like Blue Dragon came out on Xbox 360 and blah, 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 blah. Um, but long story short, Mixer is tied heavily to Xbox, so it's a very isolated situation, and there's very little... It, it's not really marketed heavy towards like the world, even though it probably did have streamers from all over, but not nothing like... I mean, hell, I feel like Caffeine has more streamers across the world than uh, than Mixer did. Mm -hmm. Mixer was very centralized. And that's cool if the support is there. But most people are watching Twitch. Yeah. I don't think... I think Mixer just... It was a carbon copy. It was where people went when they got banned from Twitch. Very true. It was That's where you went. You went there. And uh, it was because the it was so similar to just put your you know your stream key here and everything would load up just the same. Um, I what I didn't understand what I didn't understand was like a lot of YouTube or like a lot of YouTubers like there, there's a few now that I, I can think of off the top of my head that uh, when all whenever this when ho this whole competition thing came into play a lot of people started streaming exclusively on YouTube. And it worked out for them because their following is on YouTube and YouTube started to make the adjustments to get bigger. So I wouldn't sleep on YouTube. I didn't know how to rate like Mixer, YouTube and the rest of them. We always knew Twitch where Twitch was. Twitch was the big dog. It's the Bitcoin. It's not going nowhere. So, um, yeah, I just didn't know how to rank the rest. Mixer making the decision to do what they did now. I mean... Unfortunately, there was a whole bunch of other stuff in there too, but it's yeah, there there's there's no way. It it's I think it's done completely. Uh, it it has to be, right? Because I mean, it is it's dead. Yeah, it, there, dead. there's just no way. There's nothing they can do. No, it died. Like Mixer died today. Mm -hmm. Um and it, it's just a simple thing of um I think it was tied too tightly to Xbox. Yeah. And um, they banked heavily on that. But remember, right when Mixer came out, you had a heavy Twitch presence. I was my first streaming experience was straight through my Xbox to Twitch. Yeah. So then to come out like it, it was it was a weird thing. I don't blame them for trying. Um, I really don't. I just wish Microsoft would have instead of tying it so heavy into the Xbox itself. I wish they would have just made it stand on its own very well first and then, of course, make it beneficial to the Xbox community. Hey, you can directly... I, I just feel like they tied it too close to the Xbox. That, that's my opinion. Yeah, because even it was... It's on PlayStation to stream there. Uh, you could have streamed off of... Uh, no, I'm sorry. It was... I think Mixer was on there. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. Let me not say that. But I know UStream was on there. Twitch, YouTube, a lot of these other places. But once again, they these were standalone things. These things were by themselves. There was nothing. There was no other advertisement there. And that's how Twitch started. Twitch was its own yeah. thing. Twitch was it like group TV or something. Justin TV or some some Justin something TV. like that. So um, yeah, it, it, you have to have been following it, but. Uh, Juan said I played in a Madden league and we streamed our games through Mixer because oh. you're playing on Xbox. You're playing on Xbox, like that, and that that's the if if the only benefit Mixer had was if you're playing Xbox, I can already tell you it's gonna lose. Yeah, I'm not I, saying Xbox is bad, 
But when you're trying to create a streaming platform, most Xbox players, like, I'm going to be honest. I'm an Xbox player. I play majority of my games on Xbox. I don't watch Mixer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, I, I watch Mixer depending on who it was. Like, I, I, I got some, I watch some of my, uh, like, for example, I got a buddy, I got a, my uncle streams on there on Mixer. I watch him sometimes. I watch, uh. I I watch the Gang of Shroud because I like watching Shroud. Shroud is actually a good player. Like, you know, he I don't watch him to be entertained like by oh, the man is a monster. He's First of all, I don't think he's human. Beast. So uh I don't think he's human. Yeah, so I watch him. Does I'm, he still I'm run slow? Say say what? Does he run claw still? I don't know if he ran claw on console. Um oh. I know the dude is a this Mouse and He's keyboard, nasty. man. I, I went back and watched some of his highlights from uh, CSGO. The dude was nasty. the champion. It, it, it's, it's, re- it's utterly, it's just so stupid to see somebody that good at something. Yeah. Like, so. It, it, it's so strange. It, it's, it's like, like, who is this guy? <laughs> well, folks, we're way over our recording time, so we're getting ready to kill the recording off. Um, much love to all those who are listening live and thank you so much and shout out to Tone Deaf and Tone, the family I appreciate Deaf you Network. much love for stopping in the stream as well and if you guys are listening to this on Spotify, Apple Music all that, YouTube, any of that you guys make sure to follow and subscribe where you can Spreaker and all that other fun stuff anywhere you listen to your podcast stuff check out all the links below make sure to subscribe I'm trying to get I set a crazy goal that I know I can do. 10K. I said, uh, yeah, 10,000 subscribers on YouTube by the end of 2020. I'm trying to get that number, and I know I'm going to get that number, and I know with you guys' help, mm-hmm. I can get there. So um, I'm Baron J67. I'm T. Jones. Thank you guys. Much love. Peace. Peace.